Good morning students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on forces and their effects, today we're going to complete our journey into discovering forces. In our previous part of this video, uh, we have defined what is a force, we have seen how we can represent a force, and we saw our first example of what we called a force diagram. Now just to finish uh, this introduction in the world of forces, we're going to see what happens if we have more forces acting on objects. So let's imagine we have a tug of war, something we everyone enjoys. No? So we have a team on one side, no, we'll call this team A, okay? So team A, okay? And they're pulling, they're pulling. So remembering how we saw in the previous video how we can represent force, we're going to represent this with an arrow pointing in this way. Okay, remember, uh, the tip shows the direction, the tail where the force is acting, and the length tells you the size. Okay, and this is the pulling force from team A. But also team B is pulling, so we need also to represent that force. So this is our team B, and let's represent the force in a similar fashion. Okay, so and this is then the pulling force from team B. Now, what happens very often in a tug of war is that the two forces are uh, the two teams are pulling with the same force. And already saying the same force is a bit of a mistake because uh, these forces will never be the same for a very simple reason. They're acting in different directions. Okay, for two forces to be exactly the same, they should also have the same direction. But what we can say is that these two forces have the same size. Okay, and when we have two forces acting on an object which have the same size, we use a word which is balanced. Okay, and it's pretty obvious what happens when the force are balanced. No, so we have a rope, the two teams are pulling with the same size force, with the same strength. The rope will not move, okay, and, and nor will be the teams. In order for the teams and the rope to move, you need one of the forces to become bigger, or as we say, we need the forces to be unbalanced. And this, this um, difference between Balance and unbalanced force will be critical for our next lessons. For now, we can stop it here. In next lesson, we're going to see how we can measure forces. Okay, so we're going to see some tools. But for today, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Buscherini.